Attach the antimicrobial agents in group 1 with their category or mode of action in group 2. So there are different kinds of antimicrobial agents and there are different, they have different modes of action. Based on that, the doctors, they uh, prescribe us the antimicrobial based on our disease and based on our cell types. So there are four antimicrobial agents or groups of antimicrobial agents and you have to match it with their mode of action. So we have fluoroquinolones, amphotericin B, tetracycline and amoxicillin. Let's see the mode of action for each of these antimicrobials. So first is, uh, so before moving on, the one of the most important point to note down is that all these antimicrobial agents, most, not all, most of these antimicrobial agents, their mode of action is to restrict either the uh, uh, transcription or translation in the prokaryotes because bacteria are mostly prokaryotes uh, and the prokaryotic uh, mode of transcription and translation they are somewhat different from that of the eukaryotes and this difference between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes it is uh, utilized by us so that uh, the mode of action of antimicrobials can be more and more specific so that our own body tissues are very less harmed when whenever we consume the antimicrobial. So first of all, what is the difference that is exploited? So we have the bacterial RNA polymerase and the eukaryotic RNA polymerase. The basic structure is the same but there are sub, sub uh, the, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase as you can see that there are many more complex uh, it is a little bit more complex and it has more number of subunits. And this is the transcription of the prokaryotes. What happens in the transcription? That DNA strand is utilized to produce a corresponding RNA strand or mRNA strand from where the proteins can be produced. Right? So, this is the template strand and this is the nascent RNA strand. Then we have the ribosomes which are utilized in the process of translation that is protein synthesis. We have the prokaryotic ribosome and eukaryotic ribosome. So you can see the prokaryotic ribosome is a 70S ribosome which is composed of 50S and 30S subunit. Whereas the eukaryotic ribosome is an 80S subunit which contains 60S and 40S. So most probably uh, so mainly what happens if we provide any anti for the NPS, they are most likely they are not going to react with the NPS subunit of the eukaryotic ribosomes, and we get a specific, uh, we get more and more specificity whenever we, we use these type of antimicrobials. But there are some forms also that are my, uh, mitochondria. We know that it has arisen from the endosymbiotic theory, and it also contains a prokaryotic kind of ribosome that is it has its own ribosome and it has a 70s ribosome so whenever we consume these uh, antimicrobials which uh, block uh, translation so it also hampers the mitochondria uh, protein synthesis and our mitochondria are affected and so uh, that is why whenever we consume these antimicrobials we, uh, the uh, mitochondria protein synthesis is blocked so there is, you can see that there is a lack of energy whenever we uh, take up these antimicrobials. And this is the process of translation. Uh, where, so if you see over here, it is a detailed process. Like first, the 30th ribosomal subunit, it binds to the mRNA strand with along with the initiated tRNA. Initiated tRNA attaches to the start photon, that is AUG. And then in the second step, there is the large subunit. It comes large and small ribosomal subunit. They come together to form a functional ribosome. Then anticodon of the incoming tRNA pairs with the next mRNA codon beside the initiated tRNA. So this is the initiated tRNA and then there is this, this is the second codon. So this anticodon from the tRNA will bind over here bringing along with it the amino acid, the second amino acid. The first amino acid is always in front and then it will bring the second amino acid according to the codons in the uh, mRNA. 
and it is a step this is the elongation step and then a peptide bond is formed between the initiator tRNA uh, that is the initi initial amino acid and the second amino acid and then uh, this process continues this process this is the initiation process this is the elongation process this process continues till all the codons and, uh, and the amino acids are attached and at the end when the strong photon comes then uh, instead of the amino acid there is uh, the stop codon it brings along with it a water molecule and then uh, this step gets completed and then it is broken and there is a complete uh, protein which gets dissociated from the uh, ribosome so this is the process of translation and these processes are i was i was going through these processes because there are uh, these antimicrobials they bind to the ribosome at different positions in the ribosome and so it is important to know how the translation works so as to know exactly at which step the antimicrobial it works so i just went uh, through a brief of the translation process so uh, for the details you have to go back and read i just give a brief recap so so what were the antimicrobial agents the first one was fluoroquinolones then is amphotericin b tetracycline and amoxicillin so what do these do so fluoroquinolone what uh, they are given whenever there is a ophthalmic injection uh, infection like eye infection infection of wounds joints and soft tissue or the respiratory, respiratory infection gi tract infection or uh, uti or urinary tract infection kind of any kind of infection we can give this fluoroquinolones and root is mostly oral or intravenous and the mechanism of action is that is inhibits the dna guidance or topoisomerase 4 that is dna guidance is involved in the DNA replication and uh, so you have to know that is inhibits the DNA guidance or so in the in a way it inhibits the DNA replication process. Next is the tetracycline. So this is an antibiotic that acts uh, or blocks the protein synthesis. As you can see, this is a picture of the ribosome with along with the 30 and the 50 subunit. And tetracycline comes and bind at this position, where uh, the amino acid tRNA will bind to the and uh, will bind to the codon. That is the acceptor. So it blocks the binding of amino acid tRNA to the uh, mRNA template or the codon cell. So it blocks the binding of amino acid tRNA. This is the mode of action of tetracycline because it's uh, it is a kind of competitive inhibition. Because uh, tetracycline, the structure of tetracycline is somewhat similar to that of the amino acid here. Then we have amoxicillin. So amoxicillin is a kind of antibiotic which is similar to penicillin. And how does penicillin work? It blocks the pericycle synthesis in bacteria. Amoxicillin treats bacterial infection by inhibiting the bacterial cell wall growth. It binds to the transpeptidase active site, it blocks the transpeptidase activity and it interrupts bacterial cross-linking and cell wall synthesis. So what uh, the transpeptidase unit, it goes and blocks that unit and thereby it blocks the bacterial cell wall synthesis and action is similar to that of the penicillin. So it is, it, it is, comes in the same group of antibiotics, you must uh, have consumed that also amoxicillin, clavulinic acid, this, uh, com uh, these two compounds are very uh, popular antibiotics uh, that is prescribed by the doctors. And uh, then we have amphotericin B. So this is a fungal uh, antimicrobial agent. So am amphotericin B binds fungal membrane ergosterol causing increased membrane permeability. So it binds to the membranes, fungal membrane, it creates kind of pores in the membrane, creation of transmembrane channels or pores, 
you can see and all the ions will get leaked out so results in the leakage of monovalent ions such as K plus, N plus, H plus and Cl minus leakage of micromolecules from the fungal cell so monovalent ions as well as micromolecules so all uh, these kind of leakage happens from the fungal uh, cell and uh, this eventually leads to cell death and some other mechanisms are it stimulates pro-inflammatory cytokines reactive oxygen intermediates nitric oxide so modulation of the macrophage activity so whenever all these are synthesized by the fungal uh, cells so it results in the activation of macrophages which then can uh, engulf these fungus and then lead to their destruction. So basically, amphotericin B acts on fungal membranes. So we go back to the question. So after reading about all these, please help. Uh, please, you can answer this question yourself also. And one more thing I would like to say about am amoxicillin is that because it is uh, similar to penicillin. It is also known as a beta-lactam uh, antibiotic uh, because penicillin is also a beta-lactamase antibiotic, beta-lactam antibiotic because it blocks the cell wall synthesis. Amoxicillin also has a beta-lactam ring and it can uh, block the activity of the transpeptidase. It will uh, like it. It also works in a competitive inhibition. So then you can answer this question. Fluoroquinolones. So I said that they inhibit the DNA guidance. And DNA guidance is involved in DNA replication. So it will inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis. Over here. So fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones, they inhibit the nucleic acid synthesis. Amphotericin B, they act on fungal cell wall uh, so therefore it is a fungal antifungal agent tetracycline they block the translation or the protein synthesis in nutrition and amoxicillin is a beta lactam anti so one is q one is q two is uh, s three is r One is R, one is R, two is S, three is Q, and four is P. 